Pat Piervo. Hello. Thank you so much for joining me today. How you doing? Welcome to Dude, this week in Australia. That's right. We're all the way from up here in Indiana. We're going down under. To see what happened in Australia this week, make sure I keep my finger on the pulse. What's going on down under? Let's do it. Top post of the week. Life pro tip. You can save a whopping 37 cents at Coles by eating gray mints. There you go, folks. Although I would like to quickly correct that math. I'm horrible. I have a horrible record at internet math, but I'm pretty sure that's only 33 cents. Might not be worth it. Actually, it says it right there. There we go. Um, what the hell is that? That is disgusting. I don't know what to say. Right off the bat, of course, we get a Coles post, number one. You love to see that. That's how you know it's going to be a good week, a good video. Um, I wish I could see the stars because you guys have this star system. I can see that if you get some, you know, typical looking red. Honestly, that looks pretty good. Some actual beef, you can assume, from a cow that was uh, at one point alive. This over here is beef from a cow that was never alive. It was made in a Petri dish. I want to see how many stars it got. It says regular, so I guess that's the same. That's impossible to believe. But apparently, that's th these are both three-star beefs. 18% uh, fat. Interesting. Over here in America, they do it like... They just round it off. It's always either 20, 10, sometimes 5. That's disgusting. If I was if I was saving 37 cents, maybe. In fact, I probably honestly would because I'm a, a loser. But for 33 cents, not worth. Anywhere Australia. <clears throat> okay, I see what we got here. This is actually kind of fascinating to me as an American. So this is like standard strip mall. Do you call it that? Strip mall, like an outdoor commercial area of, of, of uh, businesses strung together. Woolsworths, of course. Top of the stack right there. Woolworths. Then what do we got? BWS? Not sure what that is. TJ, TK Max? <laughs> Why is it called TK Max? How did I never realize that? The chain uses a different name from TJ Maxx in the U.S. to avoid confusion with the British retailer TJ Hughes. And we got Reading Cinemas. So do you read or watch movies there? I don't know. The Reject Shop. That sounds like a cool place. Not sure what that is. Now, what the hell? I thought you guys didn't do Halloween. This is the Reading or the Reject Shop website. Why is there Halloween stuff? I'm confused now. I could have sworn you guys don't do Halloween. Halloween hasn't always been widely acknowledged in Australia, but over recent years, <laughs> more people have started to celebrate. I like how they say acknowledged. Like it's, you know, I don't know. The only two examples I can think are very offensive, like Palestine, like how, you know, oh, this country, China or something, doesn't acknowledge Palestine. It's like, Australia doesn't acknowledge Halloween, you know? They like to pretend it it doesn't exist. I say get on board with Halloween, guys. It's the best holiday next to Christmas. They're kind of equal and opposites, to be honest. Now, I do understand if you're salty because as a kid you never got to participate in Halloween... But that's too bad. At some point, you got to break the cycle and start doing Halloween. Why don't y'all just shop here at the Reject Shop? This place seems awesome. You guys hate Coles. You hate Woolworths. Just shop at the Reject Shop. They got snacks, cleaning, pharmacy for less. But you guys call it the chemist. Discount chemist. That's interesting to see. Okay, so you also use the word pharmacy. Nini chicken. I don't know what that is, but I guarantee that's phenomenal. In noodle box. I just know this stuff tastes good. I don't know, but I I know. It's great. El Porto. Of course, El Porto. I reacted to a whole video about them. Razor King. Taco Bell. 
Smoking Joes. <laughs> it's such a generic looking logo for a pizza shop, like a New York pizza shop. Okay, I have not read the title yet, but what do we got here? We have shapes and then dust on it. Is that like Cheeto dust? Like flaming hot Cheeto dust? What happened to my barbecue shapes? Oh my god, that's just the dust that was in the package? I'd say you, get, you hit the lottery. We'll see what the comments say, but I think that... <laughs> those are the most flavorful shapes to ever exist. <laughs> you hit the holy grail! What did I say? <laughs> HSC English exam using AI images. <clears throat> Ooh, uh, is that like bad? Like wh what? What's the HSC English exam? Okay, so it is like the final exam basically to graduate high school in Australia. And it's the English portion. And they're using AI images. As a 12-year student who just did the first English exam, I was genuinely baffled seeing one of the stimulus texts you have to analyze is an AI image. I found My friend found the image online. For a subject which tells you to analyze the deeper meaning and the composer's intent, appreciate the aesthetic, having an AI image. Are you, are you serious? They asked you to analyze the composer's intent of an AI image. It is so crazy. Wow, that's so damn lazy and stupid. <laughs> I don't even know what to think about that. Damn, there was no intent. It was literally generated in like four seconds by a computer. How's that for an answer? It's gonna be a hot one, folks. Gear up, get ready. The chance of exceeding the median minimum temperature the median minimum temperature for December 2024 to 2025. That's an interesting thing. You know, my brain is a little bit slow, but I'm like, okay, the median minimum temperature. <laughs> okay. Okay, so it is not going to get very cold this summer in Australia, it, which means it's going to get hot. And it is pretty much 100%. I mean, this is off the scales. The entire thing, including Tasmania. Off the scales. Chance of exceeding minimum minimum temperature. 80% or higher. According to the Australian Government Bureau of Meteorology. So, it's probably correct. With the base period being... Whoa, 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 whoa. 1981 to 2018. Oh, this top comment has a good point. Time to start saving up your money, folks. AC ain't cheap. <laughs> Public enemy number one, Coles and Woolsworths, blamed for cost of living crisis. This is wild to me how much this topic is discussed every week. But okay, everything you need to know. Little video here about price gouging. Oh my god, that music is horrible. Accusations of price gouging have been in the news a lot lately as Australians cope with the coast of cost of living crisis. Okay. What exactly is price gouging? Can it be stopped? <laughs> I don't know why. I'm sorry, guys, but this is kind of funny to me. Can it be stopped? Can the price gouging be stopped? An example would be the time during the pandemic when retailers of at-home test kits began charging exorbitant prices. Yes. Yes. To be honest, that's kind of a relief to me to, to read a, an accurate description of price gouging. Indeed. When during a crisis, people withhold necessities at an exorbitant pr cost. Indeed. Indeed. A surge in demand led to that price gouging, though it can also occur after a supply shock, like when gas giants were accused of war profiteering in the wake of invasion of Ukraine. More recently, Australia's major supermarkets have been accused of price gouging. <coughs> the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission is now investigating whether chains like Colesworth... Oh my god, how fast do you guys read? Raised prices more than needed. What does it mean more than needed? 
Uh, these companies don't give a crap about you. That's the part where it's like, I don't, it, it kind of confuses me. I'm like, they, they're just going to raise the price as much as they can get away with. They are not like, hey, how much do we need to? They're like, yes, raise it more. They're still buying it. Raise it more. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much a look behind the scenes. But the watchdog can't prosecute any companies over high prices because even though it hurts consumers, it's not illegal to price gouge. Well, it's not illegal to raise your prices, obviously. Instead, the ACCC prosecutes when companies make false or misleading claims. See, now that, Coles, Colesworth has been accused of a lot of that. And that is... <laughs> I hear my son yelling for something. Um, yeah, making false advertising, that's a big dealio. That they can be, you know, sued for. That could include a company saying prices have risen because supplies have run out when the increase actually flows into their profits. Several things enable price gouging, including lackluster competition, which makes it easier to raise prices. Indeed, that's called a monopoly. Indeed, indeed. That's why you need to shop at, um... Damn it, why is my memory so bad? What was that other place called? The Reject Market? <laughs> Go shop there. <laughs> Consumers also struggle about getting good information about prices, making it hard to shop elsewhere. Okay. Experts say the dominance of Australia's two major supermarket chains worsens inflation while consumers are also being kept in the dark about prices. Aren't they owned by the same, like, are they not? Because people, you know, what do they call it? Like, Colesworth? You know, they, they, they're essentially the same thing. From what I understand, you know, an outsider looking in. I thought they were owned by the same parent company. Experts say the dominance of Australia is... Um, yeah, okay, I already read that. Can anything be done? Or is it something they have to deal with? Consumer education is... I mean, what can be done is stop buying their stuff. Consumer education is a low-hanging fruit, and the government has handed choice $1.1 million to produce regular grocery prices breakdowns for shoppers. Okay. Poor communication is a much thornier issue. A federal government task force and three separate public inquiries into the supermarket sector are currently mulling over the problem. Okay. Cool. To me, it seems the problem is basically a lack of competition. They've essentially become a duopoly. And they probably conspire together to raise prices, which also is probably illegal. And um, they need more competition, which is not, you know, easier said than done to compete with a conglomerate. King Charles, quote, won't stand in the way if Australia chooses to axe the monarchy and become a republic. That's interesting. So would that mean the name of Australia, it, would, it, would it still be a commonwealth? The king told anti monarchs he will not intervene. That's very, you know, respectable. I like I like King Charles. That's very uh, admirable. In response, his, uh, or okay, the Australian Republic movement wrote to Buckingham Palace to request a meeting with him. He said the monarch had deep love and affection for Australia. Cool. Well, that will be fascinating to follow. I didn't know that was being like uh, considered. Is that going to be a referendum or something coming up soon? By the time we start considering becoming a republic again, he would have been long dead. Oh, okay. 90% <laughs> of Australia would say they want this. 5% would vote for it. I was going to say, why is that? That's interesting. Basically, the majority of Australians are minimum change Republicans. More or less, people want reference to the royalty removed, but nothing else to change. The Australian system of government is not perfect, but it is pretty decent, all things considered, and we don't want to risk mucking it up. The different, more dedicated Republican movement can't really come together with a unified proposal, which stymes their chances at the polls. Oh, see, hell no. Do we lose the monarch's birthday, public holiday? Of course. Say no. I'm voting no. 
You lose a holiday, a federal holiday, that's a no from me. Not that I have a vote. I, um, I don't think my vote matters living in Indiana. The price of houses in Sydney in the 1980s adjusted for inflation. Okay. You're lucky to get a unit, a, -bedroom a two bedroom, unit. yeah. Okay, 1980s Sydney is housing affordable. For 120,000. Okay, so 120,000 back then is now 330,000 today. By our calculations, these three-bedroom, mainly fibro homes are the cheapest houses in Sydney. But even if you bought one, you're unlikely to get change out of $75,000. I've been approved from the bank to borrow eighty five to $90,000, and we have to miss out on a few, a few enjoyments in life. Sydney property has soared in value by as much as 60% in the past six months, and there's no sign of the increase tailing off. He was right about that, wasn't he? I oh, suppose we could rent, but I don't believe in renting. I think it's dead money. How long is it going to be before young couples, first-time buyers, are going to be priced out of the market altogether? I believe they're priced out of the market now. Wow. It's up and up and up. We have to get... Uh, if only they knew. Uh, just a standard three-bedroom uh, brick house. <laughs> Man, it's wild to look back. Even in the 80s, they were already concerned about it. You're lucky to get a unit. That's such, that's such a screwed-up situation, in my opinion, man. And it's the same way over here in the U.S. That's why I fully understand. A two-bedroom, yeah. Australia total fertility rate. Wow. Why is that? You know, what happened in 19... What is that, 1960? 1962? Obviously, you know, ideally it would be above two or at two to at least sustain the current population. But the population of Australia is still going up because of immigration. Wow, look at that, falling off a cliff. That is disturbing, is it not? I mean, to me, that does seem disturbing. It's sad. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like this is basically a graph you can look at as like an economic measurement and see like how how wealthy do people actually feel and are? You know, put all the other stuff aside. How wealthy is the middle class to where they feel like they can afford to have, ch like, a lot of children? Because that is, that's got to be the number one factor. Having a kid is, oh my god, I can't imagine having, like, more than two kids, three kids, let alone four. Four kids? I mean, look at this. Average is three and a half. Half of people had four kids. That's wild to me. Because today, that would just, it just feels unattainable. But apparently in 1960, it was attainable and was normal. Hmm. Why do people mount half tires next to their garden tap in Australia? You have a tap out there in your garden. That's pretty neat. I've never seen that. We have taps that attach to the sides of our house. Then you'd use a hose to go to the garden. I've never seen one just popping out of a out of the ground in someone's backyard. Now, <laughs> what is the tire doing? I would understand if the tire was like around it or something to to protect it or protect someone from hitting it. <laughs> It's a bit odd. Never actually seen this done before, but I reckon it's to stop you from hitting it with your mower. Hmm. It's been, it's covering the water pipe and the meter. It's been a long time since I've seen one though. Oh wow. I ordered one head of broccoli on Kohl's, click and collect, and they gave me this absolute unit. Look at that guys, that's a feel good post, isn't it? Look at that. Now I'm sure she probably paid $35 for that head of broccoli, but in the age of shrinkflation, you know, you like to see a nice large head of broccoli. Good job, Coles. Wow, we're going on 20 minutes. Holy crap. I'm so sorry for rambling on. I think I rambled on about a couple things a little too long. But, hey, it's a free country, kind of. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have, no, not tomorrow. Have a phenomenal weekend. I'll see you next week. Goodbye.